I said, I thought about who you, you, you folks are, and I, and I really feel bad for you because you're the people that people like me are always calling up. Um, I work for Miami Herald, we have an IT department, and that's you, and, and it's gotta be pretty awful. Uh, and it, you call us, I know what you call us, you call us users. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're not allowed in the business environment to call us assholes. But, uh, but we know what you mean. We're users. You know. And we're the people who call you. You know, like, you know, I, you were at this conference, and you're you know, learning all this stuff, how there's all the incredible high and high, incredibly complicated, sophisticated things. And then we call you and say, is it bad if I got cream cheese in the hard drive? <laughs> and I, that's what I really, I saw this stuff about the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. I realized the point of the cloud, I don't understand it technically, but I get the point of it. The point of it is to keep the user's data as far as possible from the user's cream cheese. Is that not right? Not the, there's no cream cheese in the cloud. That's what I basically am. So. And I wish you all the luck in the world with that. Um, we'll, We'll fuck up the cloud somehow. I don't know. <laughs> um, give us some time. We'll figure out. There will end up being cream cheese in the clouds. And, but but um, but for now, I mean, you, you know, I've listened to you facing these huge challenges, and I thought like I should give you a, an inspirational uh, talk. A little, just a little bit of inspiration. I can't really obviously tell you anything useful technically, but I, I can talk about a little bit about inspiration and about overcoming obstacles, which is what you have to do all the time in your, in your business. And um, I often get asked, what is, of all the columns you ever wrote, is there one that was your favorite? And there is, it's one, one particular incident that, that um, happened long ago, but it's still my favorite thing, it's everything I ever wrote about, and it's absolutely true, and, and most beautiful of all, there was a TV news crew there the day it happened to record it. And I say that because sometimes when I describe this incident to people, they don't believe me, and look it up, it's in the cloud. You can find um, a video showing you exactly what I'm about to describe to you. But what I love about it is, in addition to the fact that it's true, and, and it involves how a group of guys overcame an obstacle, or tried to overcome an obstacle. And it was an interesting obstacle, a big and unusual obstacle. Um, what happened was, there was a big storm off the coast of Oregon. And when the storm cleared, uh, there was a dead whale up on the beach. Very large dead whale, 43 feet long, eight tons. Pushed way up by the storm surge, no way it was going back. And so it lay there on the beach. The weather was warm and this it started to rot and stink. Um, and so there's the obstacle, there's the, the challenge. What do you do about a gigantic dead whale riding on a beach? And I've talked to people who live there and they said it's unbelievable how bad it smelled, just horrible for miles. So, um, the decision was made in this case to bring in the Oregon Highway Department, which is called the Oregon State Highway Division. Uh, I'm not sure what the thing it was there. Uh, I guess a whale is a big thing. A highway is a big thing. So it made sense to, to somebody. So the TV news broadcast begins with a guy named Paul Lindman, who still works in, in Portland. Paul standing in front of this gigantic whale with seagulls walking around on him. And he goes, you might say they had a whale of a problem here. You know? He then introduces the head of the Oregon State Highway Division crew, running to solve this problem. It's a serious man with a hard hat. And uh, this guy doesn't come right out and say they've never disposed of a dead whale before. But you begin to suspect that might be the case when he reveals that the solution they've arrived at is to use dynamite. <laughs> and sure enough, behind him, they are digging a hole under the whale and they're putting big boxes of dynamite under the whale. I'm not sure if they followed the full highway crew procedure and put the orange cones <laughs> behind the whale and a guy with a flag, you know, in case another whale comes along. Um, but anyway, then the, the guy, the hard hat man, explains the plan. This is the plan. They're gonna blow up the whale with the dynamite. The whale will then be in little pieces. These pieces will then be eaten by the seagulls and other marine scavengers, and there you'll have it a textbook whale disposal. <laughs> so the next scene, they have backed the camera up behind a sand dune, a quarter of a mile from the whale. You're looking over the dune at the whale. They've also backed up the spectators, this 
quite a large crowd showed up to see this event. Because let's be honest with ourselves. If you knew that they were blowing up a dead whale anywhere in Las Vegas today, you would not be here, right? It'd just be me and Mike. <clears throat> so anyway, you're looking over the dune, at the, and it's kind of a peaceful scene. There's the, the beach, that's the Pacific, and there's the whale, seagulls walking around. Then you hear a countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then there's an explosion, <laughs> big explosion, huge cloud of smoke instantly appears, envelops the whale. You can't see the whale at all at this point. Then you hear some people cheering, going, yay! Then you hear one lone voice go, oh my god. <laughs> then a smear appears on the camera lens. <laughs> and then it goes black. <laughs> because what's happening now is gravity. <laughs> Gravity, which apparently no one had informed the Oregon State Highway Division about. <laughs> Gravity is causing a substance, and I've talked to people who were there that day, and they said, you would not believe how awful this was. We're talking about the inside of a rotted whale. Coming down out of the sky, all over the beach, all over the spectators, and well beyond. And some of these are really big pieces of dead rotting whale. And we know this um, because the next scene we see is the parking lot where the cameraman is run with everybody else, finally gets this goo from hell off his camera, gets it running again, and the first thing you see is a car whose entire roof has been caved in by what looks like a booger the size of a refrigerator. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to listen in on the phone call to that insurance agent? You're saying your car was struck in a parking lot by a whale. Oh, a whale from the sky. Then the camera goes back out on the beach, and there on the beach, where the whale had been, is the whale. It's a different shape now, but there's a lot of whales still right there. But there's no longer any of them on the beach is seagulls. <laughs> Maybe some seagull molecules, but any intact seagulls are on their way to Alaska at this point. What lesson does this teach us about information technology? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. I just think that you should remember, if you have a challenge, if you face a challenge in your life, big or small, personal or professional, you just can't figure out what to do about it. Uh, forget your problem for a minute and cast your mind back to that whale on the beach. And remember that no matter what else you do, don't ask the Oregon State Highway Division to help you. <laughs> well, I realize it's been kind of technical up to now. So what I'd like to do is conclude by 